<laughs> How's it everyone? This is Lokahol and in today's video I'm going to be going through another 20 tips, things you might not have known about crafting. There's also a couple of little extra ones like regex tricks, also tricks for the trade site, POB tricks. It's a bit of a mixed bag but I'm sure you're going to learn something. Let me know in the comments how many you know, how many you didn't know and as always please leave some that you feel that I missed. The idea with this is that all the cool suggestions that come from the community, I'm going to be turning those into shorts, which I've been doing a lot more of. So keep a look out for any shorts related to this. Some of them will be from this video, but a lot of them will be new ones from the community. Now let's go over some interesting and useful things that you can do with your crafting bench. So let's say I have a pair of boots and I want four red sockets on these boots. You can try your luck with chromatic orbs. However, you're probably going to have a very bad time. It's going to take hundreds, if not thousands to get it. Items tend towards certain socket colors. So items that have a higher, let's say, intelligence requirement are going to tend toward rolling blue sockets and have a much lower chance to roll red and green sockets. Same thing for items with dexterity requirements. Those will roll more green sockets and strength requirements will roll more red sockets. I believe the higher the requirement, the more it will tend toward those socket colors. So how do we get three or four red sockets on our boots that really want to roll blue sockets? Well, if we go over to our crafting bench, we can firstly type in red sockets. To start off, let's go with at least two red sockets. Now the next step to get the next couple of sockets what we can do is go sockets and what we are going to click here is two sockets. We're going to put this thing down to two sockets like that. And then we're going to click three sockets, two sockets, three sockets over and over and over until we get that third red socket. This is much more affordable than using thousands and thousands of chromes. Also should be a lot quicker, can be a bit of a pain but you can do it like this, two sockets, three sockets, two sockets, three sockets. There we go. So we got that third red socket and now we can do the same with the final one, three, four, three, four, until we get that fourth red socket. Now, another cool thing you can do to change the socket colors on a corrupted item is to again, head over to the crafting bench. What you want to do, let's say you want red sockets, you can click over here, has at least one red socket. This will cost as many Vile Orbs as it costs the usual craft. Let's say we want two sockets on this. We can click this, it'll cost us one Jeweler and one Vile Orb, and we can do it like that. We can push this up to, let's say, four sockets, and then also do four linked sockets. However, I have run out of fusings. Now, with the introduction to Tainted Currency, you might be wondering what is the point of doing this? Well, firstly, it can be a little bit cheaper on items with fewer sockets. Let's say helmets, anything that's not a six link or a six socket, you can use instead the crafting bench instead of a tainted jewelers if it's cheaper. However, when it comes to socket colors and tainted chromatic orbs, this is a very important tip. Tainted chromatic orbs seem to completely ignore the natural tendency for an item to roll certain colors. So this item, has a dex requirement, which means it's going to tend toward green sockets. If I use this tainted chrome, you're going to see we're going to get like red, green, blue. It doesn't matter. See there we got four off colors. So tainted chromatic orbs can be very useful. However, they do seem to just completely randomly re-roll the socket colors. So if you need, let's say on this heat shiver, four green sockets and it's corrupted, don't use tainted chromatics because you're going to have a very hard time getting those colors. Instead, what you do, pop it in the crafting bench and do it like that. That being said, tainted chromes can be useful for the exact reason that I just described. They cannot be useful. So let's say we have a chest like this. This armor, it has a high strength requirement. It's always going to want to roll red sockets. Let's say I need four blue and one green on this thing. Tainted chromatic orbs are probably going to be your best bet on this. It's going to roll a lot of off colors when you do it like this. So tainted orbs for when you need off colors on a corrupted item. Otherwise, rather use your crafting bench. 
Now on the topic of tainted currency, tainted jewelers and tainted fusings can be super powerful on leaks off for getting that early six link. However, it can also be very powerful for getting a very cheap, unique, with a really good corrupted implicit on league start and getting it then six linked. So let's say we have this dendro bait, pretend this has plus two level of socketed duration gems, which would increase the level of my blade vortex by two levels, tons of extra damage. I wanna get this thing six linked. How do I do it? So first thing we wanna do with this dendro bait we can set this to four sockets. And then instead of going for five sockets, which costs a ton of jewelers and volobs, we can use the tainted jewelers. This will either add or remove a socket. It's a 50-50 coin flip. There we go, we added one. Now we can do it again. There it added six, we got lucky. Now we wanna do that again, but we're gonna do that with the linked socket. So we're gonna go four linked sockets don't start with five unless you have just hundreds of ball orbs. So we're gonna go four, and then we're gonna tainted fusing. It went down to three. In this case, what we would do is then, instead of using another tainted orb of fusing, we're gonna hit it again, four linked sockets, and then we're gonna hit tainted fusing. We lost the socket. Again, there we go, we got up to five, and now six link like this. I've done this many times on my BV builds, to get like a day two six linked plus two dendro bait. Not as useful if you're using a rare chest, but if you're using a corrupted unique chest that's very cheap, you can buy 30 dendro baits and then just corrupt them all until you get the corruption you need and then six link it in this way. Can get unlucky and get expensive, but incredibly worth it. Another great tip with the crafting bench. Let's say there is a specific craft you need and you don't know where to get it. Well, if you go to your bench and scroll right down to the bottom, you'll see there is an undiscovered section right over here. Let's say you're looking for accuracy. Where do I get that? Well, if you hover over it, it'll show you exactly where you find this, the desecrated chambers. Then you go to the desecrated chambers, Western Forest, the archives. You don't need to check Google or look online PoE wiki or whatever. Same thing for veiled modifiers. Let's say you want damage per frenzy charge. Get this from unveiling weapons. However, this will also show you specific unveils. Let's say I want summon spectral wolf on kill. Where do I get this? I can get this from Thane. So I will need to unveil amulets from this specific master. Now, how do you know if an item has a specific veiled mod from a specific master? Let's hop over to the trade site. So let's say we want that specific unveil from Jorgen. What we'll do is we'll go over to the trade search over here, type in our tilt to put it in fuzzy mode and type in Jorgen's veiled. And you'll see of the veil of Jorgen's veil. This one is particularly useful on League Sot for Elrion's veil, the minus mana cost on jewelry. Very common Elrion's veiled. You can search this and then click search. All of these items, when you unveil them with Jun, will have a chance to get that specific veiled modifier you want. In order to increase the odds that you unveil the correct modifier, let's say we want that minus mana cost from Elrion, what we can do, buy one like this with an open prefix, and then what we can do, first go to your crafting bench, block a modifier, let's say mana, and then first unveil it with Jun. That way, she won't be able to unveil mana, gives us a higher chance to unveil what we want. Now, another amazingly helpful thing with the crafting bench is that you can use regex with it. Regex is a short string of things that will highlight certain modifiers. That's a really dumbed down way of saying it, but let's say you have a very repetitive craft. On this helmet, I really want to hit cold resistance, for example. So what we could do before we exalt slam it, what we might want to do is block strength and then block it like that and then exalt it and we hit accuracy rating. Oh no. Well, what we would do then is then we have to go remove crafted mods and then we would use our Eldritch Anult to try and remove it. Ah, oh, we missed. And then we would have to go up here again and block strength. Do it again. Instead, what we can do is type strength. And then also add in this little 
slash this is next to your enter button and type in remove crafted like that. So now that we have this up, we can just quickly flip between them. Now we can slam our helmet. We hit, we, are, we got fire resistance, remove crafted mods. Then we're gonna annul it. And then we're gonna block strength. And then we're gonna slam it till we get that cold res like that. But you can use fairly complex strings of different shorthand things. Like you don't even need to be highly specific and go, you know, V E C R because that has remove v -e correct after mods. <laughs> you can also use regex strings in your tabs to highlight specific modifiers that you're looking for. Let's say I'm looking for boots that have fire resistance. You can just type it in like that, but you can also type in fire res, let's say cold res. Mm, what about lightning like that? And then if you add the little quotations at the beginning and end, it'll highlight different mods with those things. You can also type in, let's say, fire res like that, and then add an exclamation mark at the front, and that's going to exclude all items that have those modifiers. Now, this is particularly helpful when rolling maps in bulk. If you want to exclude all map mods, let's say reflect, and you don't want to have to look at each map individually, what you can do is use a regex string. Now, don't worry, you don't have to memorize these all. There is a wonderful website called poe.re. I will link it in the description. But this website you can use to create regex strings. For example, in the map mods things, you can set here. So you can say, I want at least X quantity, or I do not want any of these mods. You can click it and it'll create you a little regex string over here. You can copy this and then put it into your tab over here like that. Now you can also use this for other useful things like expeditions to create strings for Gwenin, or even more useful on League Start, trying to highlight certain socket colors. So let's say on League Start, I really need green, 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 or we can click that. It'll help create a little regex for us. This you can copy and paste into a vendor and it'll highlight items that meet those requirements. So for example, we go to Lani, we type that in. She doesn't have any of the things we need. Same thing with this guy. Ah, there's a green, green, red. Perfect, it's highlighted. Now, where do you store all these regexes so that they don't go missing? Well, Awakened POE Trade is a wonderful tool. You can use it to price check items. However, you can also use it to save regexes and some other useful stuff. If you push numpad nine, it'll bring this up. So after pushing numpad nine, you can click one of these. I don't know exactly how it looks on default, but if you hit edit, you can then click over here and go add and then add a new regex like this and call it, let's say regex for video and it'll save it onto your thing. And then when you want to bring up your regex, what you do, in your vendor or in your stash, you'll push numpad nine, you click regex for video and it'll bring it up. This way you can store many, many regexes without driving other people nuts or having to open notepad to pull them up. Another trick you can do to get 20% quality on support gems, but no longer active gems is to sell a level 20 support gem with a single GCP. It'll give you a level one version of that gem with 20% quality, which you can then re-level up to 20. This used to work with active skill gems. However, this was removed. Another thing you can do with gems, if you want to lower the level of the gem, what you can do, put it in the vendor with a single orb of scouring that will lower the level by one. Also, if for some reason you wanna lower it to level one, you can sell it with an orb of regret and you're gonna get a level one gem. This is primarily useful for auras. Let's say you have something like precision and you level it up and now you don't have enough unreserved mana to use it. Well, now you can de-level it with a single orb of scouring and the vendor. Now this one's a little bit naughty, but look, we need to take care of our hands. You can bind your scroll wheel to left click. This will allow you to quickly put things in your stash. If you hold down control and then scroll, it'll put it in very quickly like that. I use this through my mouse's personal program. 
This is a red dragon mouse. I've just bound my scroll wheel up to left click and I can put things in my stash very quickly like that. A lot of people use this. No one's ever seemingly been banned for it, but apparently you can do whatever you want now and not get banned for it. The safe choice. <laughs> no. Nothing to see here. <laughs> Now, if you want to import an item directly into Path of Building, what you can do is press Control C to copy it, open your Path of Building and press Control V, and then it'll pop it straight into Path of Building, just like that. You can see the difference this item would make to your build. Another thing you can do to copy an item on the trade site to see how it would affect your build is to go over to the item and then down here, click this little copy item button. It'll copy it onto your clipboard. Then you can pop it straight in POB and once again, control V and see how this will affect your build. There's a very cool way that you can divine certain resistances using the Haughty Crafting Station and also change a certain incursion mod to one that might be more useful. So there is this hybrid resistance damage mod. There's one for cold, fire and lightning. What you can do is you can change this modifier so let's say I want the fire hybrid incursion mod. What I can do is go cold to fire and I'm going to change this from cold to fire. And you'll see it goes from the other one to this one. Usually the other modifier is the most popular, the cold one. So we'll go fire to cold and this will swap it back from fire to cold. This you can also use to divine this specific mod, which has quite a wide range and we'll use a lot of divines. So instead of using divines, what you do is you just go back and forth between these two until you get that 48, 50 on this, back, forth, 48, 31. Still not perfect, but a good tip to save some divines by doing it like this. Now that is going to be it for this video. If you made it to the end, thank you. And also let me know how many of these did you know? How many of them did you not know? Which ones did you think were the coolest? And also, please, if you have any that you feel I missed that are really cool, let me know in the comments below. Maybe we'll do a second version of this video. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Stay safe. I'll catch you in the next video and goodbye. Exile. You're making me